to be the wife of a congressman then means to live a life of no consequence? Yes. If the world I'm supposed to change is Dave's world. I only know that I'm, I'm very weak. I'm grieving because of what I've lost, but I don't know what it is. But for now, this ring won't help. I hope this is you, Lee. I trust you've seen the morning paper. Uh, have I? What's going on? You're the reporter. You tell me. You could have at least had the courtesy to let me in on your plans. I realize I am only your daughter. I but would I love to have let you know. Unfortunately, I had to wait to read about them in the Chronicle. What? I thought it was your newspaper's policy to relegate gossip and speculation to Hildy Jackson. Wait a minute. Instead, I, I find it reported as news by your friend Jean Redlon on the front page, accompanied by a photograph. Hold on. Are you saying that it isn't true? Of course it isn't. Oh, oh no. Well, I would like to know how it happened. I wish I could tell you. Well, you certainly better try. Look, as mad as I am at Gene Redland right now, I know he's too good of a reporter not to have had a source for this, a reliable one. Ah. Uh, perhaps my intended. It is possible, isn't it? Not only possible, but likely. And let's not forget his trusty aide-de-camp. Sebastian. No wonder he was so anxious last night. He had a deadline to meet. What? Well, there... There is some truth in this. Lee did ask me to marry him. Mom! But this was not my answer. Well, what was? I told him that uh, I couldn't make a decision right now. What reason did you give him? My reasons are my own business. Was it because of Dad? Oh, Stacy! Well, I don't think it's an unfair question, especially considering the fact Especially that... considering what? Never mind. Like you said, it's none of my business. Stacy, I am already enough in the dark. If you know something that concerns this, this, this charade, then I think I have a right to know. I think game might be a better word, except that there's really only one team, Lee, Sebastian, and Amber. And in case you haven't guessed it, Mom, the prize they're after is you. <laughs> Okay, you two. Would you stop it? You're starting to treat me like I'm a piece of glass or quiet, something. Quiet, quiet. You take the orders we give them. A uh, couch? Yes, for now. What do you mean, for now? What is this for now stuff? I'm going to sit right here for the rest of the day. Oh, will you care to take bets on that? Ben, the bedroom is boring. Uh, uh, I think I saw the paper out in the hall. I'll go get it. <clears throat> That's not what you used to say. Well... That's because you were with me, and now I've got to be alone. <laughs> ben. See, I'm not bothering you two or anything, am I? No, not at all. Good. Besides, I've got a cleaning lady coming in this afternoon. 
She's an expert on Venetian blind dust. Should be a scintillating conversation. Oh, I can hardly wait. And tell me, what are you going to do while I am slowly being driven crazy? Actually, I have a very dull afternoon of earning a living ahead of me. Dull? Sounds great to me. You should be counting your blessings. So should you. No more complaining. Now, <clears throat> shall we go prepare the royal chamber? Well, you just better be sure that the uh, court jester's under the bed, because I think I'm going to need him through all this. Hey, Mom, are you all right? Oh, sure. I guess I was just a little surprised to read this. Do you really need me to tell you what an asset you'd be to Lee's campaign if you were his wife? And do you need me to tell you that there are two teams in this so-called game? That you and your father are the other? All right, maybe you're right. But Lee and Daddy are using entirely different sets of rules. Lee is purposefully trying to humiliate Dad, trying to trip him up to make himself look better. And this is what you weren't going to tell me? Yes. Well, of course you have examples. Yes. Well, the flowers, for one, they were from Dad, and Lee passed them off as his own. And your proof? A florist who has Dad's order. Ah. Lee ordered from someone else. And when the flowers were delivered, he assumed they were his. In which case, you should have received a second bouquet. To the best of my knowledge, you did not. The order was lost. A perfectly reasonable misunderstanding. All right. If you won't accept that at face value, let me give you another reasonable misunderstanding. At the fundraiser, Lee tried to get Daddy to take a drink. How? By pouring vodka into his glass when he wasn't looking. Someone saw him do this? No. Then how do you know it was Lee? Because no one else was near the glass. And when Dad went to propose a toast, Lee practically handed him the glass. Lee picked up the wrong glass. Oh. I know for a fact that there were people there who gave their punch a little assistance. <laughs> this is all childish. Silly pranks and even sillier finger pointing. Almost as silly as announcing a bogus engagement. Or are you going to say that Lee didn't do that? We don't know who did it. Are you forgetting your own suspicions of only a moment ago? No. And in case you're thinking that Dad sent me to do his fighting for him, don't. He thinks this whole thing is as childish as you do. And if you don't believe me, then why are you so defensive? I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm a little upset this morning. But all your charges against Lee, are, they're not supported. They're only unsupportable in that it's Dad's word against Lee's. The question is, who are you going to believe? Oh, hi, Marianne. Hi, Ben. Uh, you can pay homage to the queen. Uh. I've got to run. Bye-bye. <laughs> What's going on here? We have just given Lori her orders. And I am just about to become an integral part of the mattress in the other room. <laughs> well, happy homecoming anyway. Oh, thanks. Hey, listen, we've just been reading about Russ in the paper. Oh, yeah, but well, what do you think? Uh, as soon as I glance at it, I'll let you know. Mary Ann, do you want some coffee? Yeah, sure, thank you. Okay. I know it must have been hard for Russ to say some of those things. But he felt like it was the right thing to do. In fact, I think that this is the first in a series. Um, that report is Stacy Phillips, who's covering the story. She said mm -hmm. that in order to give it the depth that it deserves, that it requires that much space. Mm -hmm. I only hope that it reaches some people that it can help. Well, I think that's the whole idea. In fact, the principal of James Madison High School just called Russ and he wants him to speak to the students at the first assembly this fall. <laughs> That's great. So what did Russ say? Well, a tentative yes. I don't think he really looks forward to speaking to that many people. Russ Weaver, the biggest hand that ever <laughs> threw a football for the Kingsley Comets. Yeah, well, this is a little different. Oh, it certainly is. This is terrific, Marianne. I mean, the way that he talks about his afterlife experience. You know, a lot of skeptics are really going to be moved by this. Some people don't believe the Bible, but they will believe a personal testimony like this. Hmm. Well, I suppose. <laughs> well, aren't you happy, Marianne? I mean, you've got what you wanted. Russ has finally come around. 
He's made the changes that we've all been praying for. <sighs> oh, yeah, he's made the changes all right. At least on the outside. Ah, uh, I think you're just about ready for gentlemen's wear. The cover. <laughs> What's that? Just a fashion magazine. Now, where is that handkerchief that Mrs. Lucas ironed for you? Right here. Okay, no, no, no. It doesn't go there. We fold it up real pretty like this. Handsome for you, I guess. And it goes in there. Like that. How's that? Oh. What if I got to use it? Do I stick it back in there all dirty? Um, <laughs> Eric, I never quite figured that out myself. I think maybe you better just put this right back in your pants. <laughs> well, 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 don't we look handsome? Yes, don't we? And what's the occasion? Jimmy's dad's taking us on a tour of the Chronicle. Uh, Jean Redlin? Yes, yes, Daddy. It's all arranged. Uh, well, isn't there something else you'd rather do? Perhaps go to a movie? No. No, no. He is going. In fact, he's been really been looking forward to this for a few days now. A few days? You just didn't happen to mention that. Just a little oversight. Mm-hmm. A planned one, no doubt. That must be them. <laughs> ah, there's a quaint custom, honking at the curb instead of coming up to the door politely. <laughs> oh, come on here. Now, I want you to be a real good boy and mind your manners. Even if they don't. I will. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Fun. Well, I have a few phone calls to make, so if you'll just excuse me. Uh, Miriam, no. We have a few things to discuss. Please stay. Why should he conduct his personal life any differently than his professional one? I've known Lee for 20 years. Worked with him on two major campaigns, not to mention several other projects. Never once have I seen a hint of what you're referring to. He abhors dirty tricks. Always throws out any ploy that's remotely on that level. Mom, don't tell me you can't see through that shining armor of his. Now you're questioning my integrity. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. Look, let's say it all is true. It is. What has it gotten him? The respect of the party, the goodwill of the constituency. And no political office of any consequence above the local level. Now, if you were in his shoes and you had a choice political prize within your grasp and the competition was very tough, what would you do? Everything. Well, within reason, of course. Everything within reason means changing his bachelor status to being married to one of the most refined, respected members of Kingsley society. I can't believe that's the only reason. Well, I'm glad you're so sure, because from where I stand... Which is squarely in the center of your father's camp. I still think I'm objective enough to see the situation clearly. Oh, yes, you are objective. And yet you withhold this mysterious trump card that you claim will open my eyes. As I said before, I'm sorry I brought that up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for work. I am very unhappy with what you've done here, Stacy. It's not me you should be unhappy with, Mom. Daddy, please, I am not interested in another argument about the influence of my friends on Eric. Not today. Neither am I. And with what I have in my mind, uh, he would be spending more time with them, and so should you, for that matter. Oh, are you planning on uh, blowing up his computer up in his room? No, I'm simply going to make it as difficult as I can for him to uh, choose to go back to Paul in England. Oh, come on. I have given Paul my word on that, and I intend to keep it. Even if you could have custody of the boy? You know that his, uh, his attorneys would never agree to that. You've said yourself there is no way I would ever be able to challenge Paul on custody. Oh, no, 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 no. We won't. Eric will. Eric? Yes, because he's going to say to his father that he wants to stay in the United States with us. But he doesn't, Daddy. I told you I've already asked him about that. Well, then I suggest you ask him after he's gotten his motorbike, his uh, scuba equipment, and we've promised to give him a trip across the country. Daddy, you will never change, will you? Should I? <laughs> Hasn't anything I have been saying about buying a person's affection gotten through to you? Mim, affection has nothing to do with this. It's his presence that is important. And his happiness. What about that? Oh, well, that's relative. He can be just as happy here as he can in England. <sighs> Daddy, I wish I could agree with you on that, but I can't. In case you haven't noticed, 
We are only tolerated, we're not loved. And I want to be loved by him someday. But if you keep forcing him to stay here against his will, then that'll ruin my chance of ever having that. Well, it certainly won't be against his will if he chooses to stay freely. But he wouldn't be making that choice freely because his prized possessions would. Do you realize how difficult it is for him to say no to all those expensive toys with the promise of more always in the wings? Exactly. Uh, are you listening to yourself? You have just contradicted everything you've said. Mim, I don't care. That little boy is my link to immortality, and I am simply not going to sit around here wringing my hands watching him leave as you're prepared to do. <sighs> I don't consider wanting what's best for my son as wringing my hands. And as far as this whole idea of Eric being your immortality, Daddy, that is so ridiculous that I don't even think it needs to be commented on. Good, then don't. Particularly if you were going to think about it in religious terms. Hmm. Mim, what are you going to do when Eric goes to England? I am going to visit him in the fall. Ah, and how are you going to uh, relate to him with his school, with his sports, with his friends, and most especially Paul? is isn't going to be the same as it is this summer. I do realize that. If you're lucky, you might get 30 minutes a day. It'd be enough. For how long? A week, perhaps two, and then what? No, Mim. The truth of the matter is that uh, you simply are not a part of the life that he's made with his father. And to be perfectly honest about it, because of all the possessions that he has now, I would be very surprised if Paul ever let him come back. And he has every legal right to make that decision. Mim, we've gone simply too far, the point of no return in all this. Now, either we maintain the course we're on and make it so attractive for him that he'll want to stay here, or there's a very basic possibility here that you'll never see your son again. Now, you see, that same story is being printed simultaneously in all of the newsrooms across the country. I take it to my desk, and I turn on my not-so-trusty computer, which incidentally I nicknamed Ethel because of a cranky lady that works in the circulation department. <laughs> and you see, nothing. Now you know why I call it my not so trusty computer, huh? May I try? What's that? I think I know what you did wrong. Oh, you do? Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. On the 4000 series, you have to enter your code on line two. What is it? GR712. There you go. He's smarter than you, Dad. Uh, yeah, Jimmy, let's hold it down. Eric, how did you do that? I have the 7000 series at home. It's really neat, Dad. It plays killer mutants. Does yours play games? Only with Mr. McGovern. Uh, look, I tell you what, fellas, why don't we go down to the snack bar stand there and get ourselves a donut? And afterwards, you can meet the sports editor, who, by the way, just got back from L.A., where he had an exclusive interview with Fernando Valenzuela. Stacy, hey, this is Stacy Phillips, one of our best reporters, guys. Morning. What's wrong? You don't know. Uh, guys, why don't you meet me out at the water fountain and wait for me there, okay? Sure. Well? Up until now, I've had the greatest respect for your professionalism and your talent. But all of that's changed? That story you wrote about my mother and Lee is nothing but lies from beginning to end. Why did you write it, Jean? Stacy, I had a very reliable source for that story. Who? Sebastian Knight, Lee Crothers' campaign manager. And who else? Well, what do you mean? Journalism 101, Gene. Two sources on every item. Well, there wasn't one. Not S Lee. He wasn't available. Not my mother. Now, Stacy, I... Not didn't even me? Oh, that would have been real difficult. You would have had to have turned your chair and walked about 15 feet to ask me. Wait, now, hold on just a minute here. Now... Sebastian promised me that this was the truth. I got here and I wrote the story really quickly and I had intended on checking everything twice and I was gonna take care of whatever rewrites were necessary, but McGovern sent me to this crazy mayor's press conference and that was a mess altogether and I didn't get back. And your mother's story was already in the computer and I guess McGovern just put it through. Oh, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. One highly inaccurate reporter off the hook. No. It doesn't let me off the hook like that. You're darn right it doesn't. 
My mother is furious. And let me tell you something, Jean. If she decides to sue you or this paper, I'm going to help her in any way I can. <laughs> I'd like to speak with Lee Carruthers, please. Kate Phillips. What do you mean he's out of town? Where? Washington. But he didn't say anything about that to me. When was this decided? Is there anyone there you could ask? I have every right to know. Let me speak with Sebastian. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't tell me he's in D.C. too. When do you expect him? Good. I want him to call me the moment he gets in. Yes, he knows the number. <laughs> 